Hey everybody, welcome back to Xenogears. I think this is episode 4 and... Holy shit, I don't remember what I'm doing. It's been a little while. I know we gotta get out of here, but, you know, here we are. So let's start with some fights here. I hope you guys are ready for a lot of uh, world building and exposition in this one. It's actually really good. Uh, the next about hour of this game, I like. We ever get out of this damn Oh my god, I'm almost dead and stuff. No! Kill him. There we go. Alright, let's use a quick healing ability. Gonna show why the docks OP here because uh Almost a full heal right off the bat. Let me get out of here. Jump up there, no. God damn. This is gonna be the worst. Ooh. Lots of modifiers. Get him. With my stand off. No, Corporal, don't shoot me! God, he has nearly twice the hit points that Faye does, like, looking at it. I'm sitting here thinking I have six combo points at this point, but I do not. Yeah, get him. Is that gonna get him? Hey. Even though I've done a very, very small amount of leveling uh, here, I still feel like I'm over leveled for this area. Because these guys get killed in like 70 damage, and I mean, with basic combos, I'm doing like between 80 and 90. There's even more levels and hit points and a leather hat, yarrrr. See, I'm not too worried about that. I guess I go up these this ladder? I can't remember, honestly. It's been so damn long. Oh, yeah, 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 here we go. Cool. You guys ready for more platforming? part isn't too bad. Except that I'm gonna keep falling off. <laughs> Glad I showed that once. If you walk it, though, you should be totally fine. Oh. Shit! <laughs> Talk shit, get hit. God damn, son of the... At least there's no penalty for that. Are you kidding? <laughs> it's for the fuck... No! There we go. God damn, that took entirely too long. So once again, forced back into this damn robot. That's a bit tongue-in-cheek. Yeah, I forgot there's a dungeon coming up here. A really cool dungeon, actually. But I'll try not to spoil anything. No. Well, anything more. It's been a few years since I've touched this thing. I'm remembering this game as I play it. Huh. 
Doc starts being a weird bastard at this point. Riding in the hand. The fact that he even knows what that shit is. <laughs> like, there has to be a display in there saying, all this stuff is getting turned on. Aw, oh, shit, son! It's got a fucking eye patch! It's a robot! That's cool! Talk shit, get hit, little boy. Things will not end well for you. It's a giant robot with a fucking whip. Two of them. Here we go. Fuck it. So he immediately starts off by lowering my accuracy, so even medium attacks won't hit. I think light attacks should do okay. And there we go. Let's see. No, even light attacks won't hit him. Jeez. Good news is usually death blows always hit. Yep. Or whatever the shit they're called in when you're in the gear. Come on. Yeah! Palm to the stomach. The robot stomach. So this is the first other guy we meet who actually can use a co or combos in his gear, and he missed there. But he still did it. Is there a way for me to fix that? Restore gear defense and just shoot him with the giant Kamehameha. Damn! Did quite a bit of damage. <laughs> Did enough to finish the fight. Oh no! We got way too much fucking time on JoJo lately. But we're now sinking into quicksand. Why? Fuck it, it's fine. Everything is fine. Actually, it is fine. Asshole! Faye is uh, rightly pissed off at this guy for now.
concentration camp? <laughs> Blatant imagery. Fuck it. So even people who make it their business to know about this type of thing I have no idea what the hell this gear is which is interesting I don't know the measurement of a Charl I don't know if I can find it. It's probably in the lore book Perfect Works, but the copy I have is in Japanese, so... If someone in the comments knows how long a Charl is supposed to be... heads prevailing at this point, at least. Maybe find a little common ground. <laughs> you did a bad thing. You shut up. Okay. One of my favorite characters in the game, this morbid ass doctor. <laughs> she gets worse and worse as the game goes on. It's fucking incredible. These two already clearly know each other. Don't fire your friggin' rocket jet so close to the people. Doc, more and more talking about fate. Everything's being connected. Being called by a different name now. So if it wasn't already apparent, there's a lot more than meets the eye to this Dr. Sitan Uzuki. Alright, so let's save really quick. Yay! Old school memory card, I like it. Even though there's only two things on here right now. I'm in the middle of filming uh, the Metal Gear recollection as I film this, which is the uh, the entire series we're doing of the Metal Gear games. Starting with uh, Snake Eater and ending with 4 or Revengeance. Um, <laughs> and we're about halfway through the Phantom Pain. Which means after that it's going to be the, the two Metal Gear games, followed by, uh, followed by Metal Gear Solid. And I can't fucking wait to get to Metal Gear Solid. It's 
So those little Medusas take like no damage, so instead of wasting fuel on them, it's better to just straight up use uh, ethers on them. Which both of these characters get attack ethers um, fairly quickly. Oh man, it's been so long since I've been in this cave. I know where I'm supposed to go, I'm just kind of looking around at this point to see if there are any uh, chests or anything in the area. Oh yeah, so this is the first time you get Bart, and uh, Bart's a one-eyed pirate with a with a, a whip. He's kind of a badass. Um, starts off with a death blow there. Uh, I'll probably do a little bit of leveling here shortly just to get him more. Um, there's a point coming up where I like to have every character at least have one level two death blow. It just makes the fights a lot easier. Um, so there may be another cut, unfortunately, but, I mean, there's no time lost for you guys, so. Also, notice this is, uh, the first time we've done any exploration in Gears, and we have these kind of cool little 2D sprites of the Gears that we're using now. They remind me a lot of the sprites from, uh... What's the word I'm looking for? They remind me a lot of the sprites from the uh, Front Mission franchise. Front Mission 3 is an awesome PlayStation game. Um, if you've got 120 hours, I suggest you look into it. There's a lot of good games on the PlayStation. A lot of good mech-related games, too. This, uh, the Front Mission series, Armored Core. God, what other mech based games are there? There's at least three or four other major ones that I can't remember off the top of my head. Here we go. Huh. Pirates say fuck each other. I don't understand what we believe in a liberal upbringing has to do with any of this. <laughs> I would think a liberal upbringing would lead to more help and support, whereas a conservative upbringing would lead to more pull yourself up by the bootstraps kind of deal. Eh, maybe a translation error, I'm not sure. God damn it, Faye. There's, like, no point anymore. I was taking it easy on you. <laughs> Don't you goddamn idiots. Go from being mature to being, like, <laughs> children. <laughs> Fuck you, then. I like how his natural adult response to dealing with this situation... Gold Nugget! You can sell those for a ton of money, but you can save them to do a special thing later. But where the hell was I going with that? I love how his natural response to doing things is to want to fucking fight everything. And yet, Faye is still working with him, even though he's like, I'm going to kill you when we leave. I hope you understand that. Ooh, we got hops. So his things are what? Maybe... 40 to 60 feet tall and they can jump their own height and they can fly. Oh god. 
So, this is a good early point, since it's our first uh, time doing exploration in Gears, for me to bring up a... Uh, bring up a point about exploration in this game that I think is one of the weak points of the game. And that is the fact that uh, so much of the game, so much of your power in the game is tied to having uh, death blows to use while you're on foot as well as in gear. In gears, there we go, words. Um, so much of it is tied to that. And yet, when you're in a gear, um, yes, you get levels. Uh, this guy will repair you if you just leave him alone, so he's a good chance to just kind of relax. Um, but you don't get any, you don't get any experience or any meter towards your, uh, learning new death blows when you're in gears. Usually you're fighting bigger enemies, so you end up getting more experience. Hmm, excuse me. But that's it. Which is... I wouldn't say infuriating, but it's annoying. Because it incentivizes you to stay out of the giant, cool robots the game wants you to use. Um, as often as possible. So you'll see some points where I'm traveling across the world. Where I'll have one guy, probably like Faye, since he already has a lot of progress towards his death blows. But I'll have one guy inside the gear, running around with people outside the gears, um, who are doing death blows against larger enemies. Oh, hey, look, a friend, maybe. Um, and that's, that's fine and all, but that's really bad, because if those guys, if we're fighting gear-sized enemies and those guys get hit, they're gonna fucking die. And then that's a huge pain in the ass to deal with. Alright, so what is the situation down here? So this is a huge stalactite cave underneath the Sea of Sand with, like, quicksand sinkholes that lead down to it. It's... it's I don't know. Alright, current situation. Surrounding area info. There's a barrier wall in the southeast of the terrace. So we want to go that way. Built to stop the shifting. Please assemble at the shelter. Okay, we can do that. Shelter. We're gonna go to the shelter. Oh, hey, look. I see the shelter. It's an interesting dungeon that it doesn't have, um... Doesn't have music associated with it. It's just all sound effects. I think that's kind of neat. Any items around here? Doesn't look like it. Oh god! Alright. So at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep Faye in his gear. Oh wait, that's right. That's another thing that annoys me. When you're on foot, um, and fighting in combat in large open areas like this you can actually call your gear Yeah, kill him. You can actually call your gear and get into it, but you can't get out of your gear in combat which is annoying So it's one way if you have to commit to it Ah, he hurt himself Yeah, kill him and as you can see, for the most part, people who are on the ground pose almost no threat to anybody in a gear. Ah! Because they do, what, like one damage? Oh my god. Oh, Jesus. And you still get the strong, or the light, medium, strong attacks out here. So, like, here's a strong attack, as it does 500 fucking damage, but there's almost no point to waste the fuel when a light attack like that does enough to kill most, um, most enemies you run into on foot. 
just outright. All right, let's see. Does it work in this? No, it does not. Um, I used to have a command set up where you could get into and out of your gears by clicking the left and right triggers, but this version that I have doesn't seem to have it for some reason. It's kind of annoying, honestly. Hey, look. There's a crotchety old man. He's so crotchety. He's just living down here in a cave. So this guy's clearly some kind of crazy mechanic, right? And he knows exactly what's going on, basically. Religious name. Pay attention to that. Believe Balthazar was one of the three wise men. Uh, Balthazar, Melchior, and Justin Bieber. I don't fucking know. Um, <laughs> but uh, pay attention to that. There's lots of interesting symbolism just throughout this entire game. Even down to more minor characters like this guy. It's pretty cool, I think. Oldest on the left and newest on the right. Bart seems to be kind of a meathead for being a scrawny 18-year-old kid. So this is important to the story. From a certain point in time, human fossils suddenly no longer appear. 10,000 years ago. So if you remember in that opening cutscene, that giant ship was crashing on the surface of a planet. Which kind of helps you piece together where we are in the timeline in relation to that completely seemingly unrelated opening. And, I mean, he straight up spells it out right here. So the ethos, the, the tech priests or whatever they are, the mechanical guys who are, uh, who take care of the gears are also teaching people the theories of evolution. So they're scientists. Um, which is interesting when you start learning about them later because they're basically a religious group. And, I mean, we'll learn about that in like 15, 20 hours, but... It's interesting that a religious group is straight up teaching evolution... And yet, here's this myth. Which is, it's it's more allegories and, and more references towards the mainstream, like, real religion, specifically Catholicism and Christianism. Or Christianity, excuse me. Um, 
Which is why I think the ethos juxtaposition of them teaching evolution is really interesting. Uh, because here's this old crazy myth that's basically the creation story from the Bible. Um... But there, here's this story that kind of coincides with what was happening in the fucking spaceship in the very beginning of the game. Obviously with some, you know, tweaks here uh, to kind of adapt it more to the story here. But basically, he's straight up saying that, yeah, people weren't here uh, t after, or before 10,000 years ago. And what we've seen so far supports that. Possibly. Okay, so this guy knows how the hell to get out of here. Old excavation site. So this is interesting. We know about, the, you know, both armies basically strip mining this land, finding old ruined gear parts that are apparently old as shit from old wars. And they're just leaving behind, like, like, caves that are not well supported and, you know, attached to the surface through quicksand and stuff. Kind of ruining the landscape, but... It's also interesting that underneath this continent of sand, basically, there's this big, huge, water-filled cave. And that none of that's getting to the surface. I don't think that anything like that's ever explained. I just never really thought about that. He even knows we were fighting. But I mean, unless a thousand charles is like 3,000 feet, if a charles like a yard or a meter or something, I mean, 2,700 feet. But anyways, um, yeah, um, <laughs> But unless it's that far away, I don't see how there couldn't be some water getting to the surface. Then again, I don't know, is the Sahara, is there like a giant water table under there somewhere? I have no idea. They don't pay me to know things on this channel. They pay me to be a juvenile asshole about video games and be a dick to my friends. Speaking of being a dick to my friends, catch our Minecraft Let's Play series every other Friday. Uh, so this guy acts as our first gear vendor, um, which is going to give you an interesting idea of how the gears work. But I'll actually go over that really quick now, because we now have a gear menu here. Uh, we can get on and off. Uh, there's gear options, which uh, you get stuff for like healing and stuff like that later on. And it's all fuel based. Uh, you've got your abilities, which um, care they usually carry over um, from what you have when you're not in a gear. But there are some that don't apply to gear combat, like elemental combat. Um, and I'm actually wrong. Elemental combat does carry over, but there's certain ether abilities relating to that that don't carry over. Uh, but specifically, I want to talk about this equipment because you have weapons for, you know, gears with weapons. And then you get accessories, um, which are equipable items that you can use to do stuff. Increased response and defense. Um, which I don't necessarily know what those stats do. They don't seem to be too important once you get further in. Um, but these are like ancillary parts. This, I mean, they basically amount to, you know, putting a flame decal on the side of your car to make it go faster. 
However, you can also actually upgrade the parts in the frame and like the fuel tanks and the engine that's inside your gear uh, through vendors like this guy here. So let's see. Where are the sensors? About gear functions. Got any parts to sell? Let's see what about gear functions is. Gear strength changes with the parts equipped and how the pilot handles it. First, let's talk about the engine. With a good engine, your attack power and fuel capacity go up. It points defense on the frame and defensibility on the armor. So the armor is the accessory stuff. The frame is like you increase your hit points by equipping a you know better frame. And then your engine governs how much damage you can do. Um, interestingly enough, the engines that you get that do uh, higher damage have less fuel. So you get to a point where it's like, okay, well, do I want to equip somebody with like a mid-range um, engine upgrade that has more fuel so he does medium damage with medium fuel? Or do I want to equip him with something light with a lot of fuel? Uh, so that I can, you know, do a lot more damage. And uh, speaking of that, let's uh, let's buy from him for gear use. He sells character items too. I think he sells like healing items and stuff. All right, so I agree with him that changing the engine is a good idea. So here is the menu. You can buy weapons and accessories here. Uh, let's see. I buy any weapons for brigandier? No, I cannot. And then tune up here is where you can uh, refill hit points and fuel, change the engine, the frame, and the armor. So same amount of fuel, but uh, higher uh, damage output. So we'll do that for both of these guys right away. Uh, let's see. Get a much better frame. So increasing the uh, hit points on these things significantly. And then there's armor values. You get um, ones later that have like uh, better values, like armor values against magic and stuff like that. Uh, oh, well, we were able to just straight up refill everything. And then the cost to refill uh, hit points and fuel is pretty much negligible. All right, I'm taking a quick break. I'll be right back.
All right, I'm back from my unfortunate break I had to take. Mm -hmm. And we will go now. So, now that we have uh, done the upgrading, let's uh, go get these sand sensors. Uh, let's see. Ask him where the sensors are. One is up on the rock ledge above the boulder in the Great Hall. You can find it by climbing the terrace stones out there and heading into the passage on the northwest wall. The other sensor is on the rock which you see you know, like a dirk a dirk a dirk a dirk a dirk a dirk Okay, cool. Walk away. Thanks, bro. So, um, obviously we upgraded our shit to include and completely replacing the armor and the the frame on the damn thing. Um, hey, a fight. And, like, he didn't do that because he hasn't even looked at the gears. Shit. You screwed it up. No. These guys actually have an attack that sucks fuel, which is really annoying. But, um... Shit. They also can do a fair amount of damage. There we go. Kill him! So yeah, uh, suspend your disbelief with the upgrades. It's not just like putting on a new, you know, chest piece or something. Alright, come on, can you get him? Son of a bitch! do a lot of damage. They've got a regular attack that doesn't do much damage, but that's not the point, damn it. Kill it. There we go. At least the upgrades are helping, and I'm getting some good levels here, too. The attack and hit percentage and the high level hit point gains are key. Hey, I learned Hagan. Which, speaking of that, let's have a little fun. So we've got Bart here, and he's now on foot. But since they follow you, he moves at the speed of basically a sprinting gear, and we'll look at these hops. He can jump an entire football field in length by himself. He's so good! <laughs> so we're actually going to continue on like this for a little bit, uh, just to hopefully be able to help with his uh, death blow abilities. Uh, the people who are on foot are usually much faster than the gears as well. So even though it's ATB and everything stops, Technically, also look at the damage he does towards this thing specifically. There are certain like bigger enemies that can just get ripped apart by the smaller people. Also getting some pretty good experience here. Which is nice. So you know what? Really quick. He didn't have the thing before, he still doesn't have it now, which means he needs more time in the oven. Oh, I'm gonna give him that time, girl. I'm gonna give him that time real good. I said before, I really like how we're in a cave and there's like no music except for the fights. It's just this nice atmospheric dripping. So now that he's upgraded, he just kills him in one hit. Which means this is gonna go really fast. However, since I'm trying to get him all death blowed up, uh, and the fact that... Where was I going with that? The fact that 
Uh, Faye isn't going to get any less experience for just chilling the entire fight, and he can't take damage. There's no reason to not just have him sit there and recharge his fuel while uh, Bart does all the knife work down here with these guys. And when you're doing this kind of mixed combat between gears and people, uh, the gears can use items. Um, and they can still use, like, their healing ethers and stuff. But if I remember correctly, some of the effects are different. And also, items do not work on gears. So you can't use, like, a healing item that would work on a person on, you know, on a, on a fucking giant robot. Which makes sense, right? I mean, you feel good about that, right? What are we doing? Oh, we're still going down this way. Did I? No, I didn't turn myself around. Just keep slowly curving. This place is kind of built to be a maze, so if you're not... Uh, ...confident in where you're going, it is very easy to just get super duper lost. Let's see, nothing up here. I believe this is, yeah, this is right above where we were before. Hey, we did it. I didn't miss an item up here, did I? Woo! I just made him jump down about 100 feet. His legs are fine. It's fine. Shut up. I will use Faye on these guys, though, because if they attack Bart, they can one-hit him, even if he's at full health, which is part of the reason I'm not healing him, or worried about healing him, I should say. And yes, I am kind of... What's the word I'm looking for? I'm kind of using the combos randomly. Um, I've actually found that it's much harder to gain death blows by just doing the button combinations for the death blow. Oops. Um, over and over. And it's actually easier uh, to gain points in multiple death blows by just varying up your combos doing, I guess I quote unquote gibberish combos. Combos that don't really lead towards anything. So, like, square, square, triangle, that's never going to be a death blow. And only one person's going to get a death blow that's like square, square, X, so in terms of it being similar to something, it can't even really compare. Yeah! That one hit, hard hit is really good. As I'm being slowly shot to death. Really interesting character design. Weird kinda almost cowboy looking pirate dude with a whip. Damn. Son of the beach. Hey, he's still dead. Still overkill for these guys. So, the first time I ever played through this game... Am I going the right way? Yeah, I'm going the right way. The first time I ever played through this game, I didn't know how death blows work. I didn't really have the internet to look it up. Um, and so I got to about the halfway point in the game, knowing about as many death blows as I do now for each of the characters. And let me tell you, that playthrough was fucking nightmarish. It was borderline impossible to beat some of the bosses. So for anybody who asks, you know, hey, you were level 15 last last episode, and this episode you're level, you know, 20. You know, what the shit. 
Um, there are some fights that are fucking difficult anyways later on. Um, so I do not want to subject you to multiple failures or me having to record the same fight over and over until I finally beat it and then just only show the one I beat where I'm like super salty and pissed off by the end of that. That's not the type of, pl of LP I'm going for here. I just want you guys to experience it. Um, and I'm, I'm, you know, people who've played this game before but don't have access to it now will probably appreciate that, but I can also assume that people who are seeing this for the first time, if there are any of you, hello, thanks for hanging out. Um, Anyways, I'm sure you guys can appreciate that, too. Like, if this was, like, a four-hour game, you know, I would throw all the failures in there because it's easy to, you know, overcome that, and then that's, you know, funny. But, yeah, this, this, this is probably going to be the longest LP on the channel if you don't count, um... What the fuck? If you don't count um, the recollection as one giant LP, which I do, but if you don't count the recollection as one giant LP, then this is going to be the longest LP on the channel, and I'm sure the last piss. Ah, there we go. I'm sure you guys don't want to be stuck <laughs> watching me fail through a boss fight six times. Alright, so we just picked up an upgrade for Bart's gear. Let's equip that really quick. Doing more damage than Veltal. The gears without weapons. I don't... I don't know how I feel about the weapon situation in this game. Uh, because you've got hand-to-hand -hand martial artists like Faye and Satan. And uh, kind of mild spoilers, but he doesn't always only fight hand-to-hand. -hand. Um. But then you've got, then you've got fighters that use weapons. And their damage output is obviously based on the weapons that they have equipped. So if you miss a weapon or can't afford a weapon, then these characters are not going to do nearly as much damage as the hand-to-hand -hand guys, which is super annoying to me, I think. Oh no, I don't want to fight with him, that's right. You shot me! You shot me in my giant armored robot, how dare you? If I'm not mistaken also, the characters who use weapons, their attack power doesn't go up when they level. That. Yeah, get him with the heavy stuff. So those characters, they're kind of stuck at a plateau until you get to the next upgradable weapon. And I could be wrong about the the the, the damage not upgrading uh, with level ups. I could be wrong about that, but I don't think I am. Fuck, where was I going with that? Am I... Yeah, this is the way. Um, shit, this is not the way. Um, but that makes for interesting characters, but it's like half and half and half the time it's like, like, bro, I don't even, I can't, I don't even want to use you because here's this hand-to-hand -hand guy who's going to get stronger as I level up, whereas you're going to be stuck there. Great, another fight. Great! Eh, it's fine. Kill the giant flying squid. Ah, oh, these guys have no damage. Let's see if healing... Oh, okay. So I can't use my gear thing on the guy. That's annoying. Let's look at items. 
Can I throw an item at him? Okay, I can throw an item at him. Thanks for the animation for that, Squaresoft. I'm being an asshole. So you can use items when on people when you're in Gears, but you can't use items on... Or you can't use ethers on people, but you can use your ethers on other Gears. It's weird. Hey, we learned a new one. That's pretty good. I like that. Yo, I like that. Here we go. So we have done it. Let's get the fuck out of here. Hey, look, and there's the gear still sitting in the same place. I like that. I like the fact that they sit in the, you know, same place. Wherever you left them. And granted, you know, if you do jump back in, they do teleport right back to you, basically. You know what? I want to start rotating my saves. Not that it's that important. Considering I also have backups you guys aren't seeing on camera. But, uh, yeah, still smart, still pretty smart to rotate your saves. Especially if you hit a point where, you know, there's no return, which happens in games a lot. Uh-oh, what's he doing? Ah, oh, there we go. I didn't even go look at that thing. It's just a giant wall that we could probably fly over, but... I'm sure there's supposed to be a ceiling on this cave that we're not able to see just because there's the damn, you know, question of a camera. Which makes sense. Why waste assets? This game is already so asset heavy. We did it! Some more questions for this guy. So now, just straight up Deus Ex Machina. Just man made gods. The Omni Gear. The Gundam! <laughs> it's not really a Gundam, but shut up. So this guy told us about these ancient legends that he believes in, but now that Bart brings up an Omni Gear and starts talking about it as being reality with him and indulging him, he's like, no, don't listen to me. So strange behavior, but maybe he's just old and senile. It's also going to fix our gears. So he says the gears that are being excavated now are about a few hundred years old, and it's about 500 years. Uh, they're usually about 500 years old. Um, and that will be explained later. But as he's talking about, they're, 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 they must have been buried after a war. And there's just no records. Nobody has any idea what the fuck's happened in the past 500 years. Like, continents. But everybody knows that the ethos controls the records. The same people who are teaching evolution as a religion, while also teaching about God, and suppressing heretical non-beliefs, like this stuff that this old man's talking about? <laughs> it 
And even eat meat-headed idiot Bart Okuyasu over here. <laughs> is suspicious about the fact that this old man knows all this shit. And is down here. By himself. This can't be! So if this is a brand new experimental fucking Kislev gear, why does this crazy old hermit down in the ground in the middle of Ave know about this thing and know about the point of it? Because if you remember, Graf was like, this this is the Slayer of God. We're going to kill God. And then this old guy is like, this gear, the fucking Slayer of God fucking uses this shit. Oh my God. Son of the beach. So everybody knows everything, and nobody knows is telling anybody anything. And we have amnesia, and everything's fucked. And all the records are being held by this cabalistic fucking religion techno group. Okay, so I'm going to say... Oh, I'm going to actually go back in here and talk to him really quick, because he has some interesting dialogue here. It's also fairly antagonistic. Where you at, old man? Come here. The fuck, did I miss him? There he is. He's over there in his kitchen. Kitchen? I don't know. Tell us some more. I have nothing more to say to you, so just leave. He's really... Oh, I clicked the damn same thing again. Shit. Come on! Here we go. Sell us gear parts. <laughs> when Calamity beats you, I'll just get these parts back anyways. <laughs> so he's just straight up saying you're about to get your ass kicked by something. Which is... Fairly... You know, ominous. Uh, let's see. Items. Let's sell some of the stuff we have. Is it the hub jerky I want to sell? No, it's eyeballs and stuff. So this is one of the main ways you go about uh, getting stuff is by selling stuff that falls off of enemies. Like that. Hob jerky, which granted you only get five for that, but like the eyeballs and stuff are pretty good. And they drop fairly often, so. I might have talked about that in the uh, previous episode. So, uh, speaking of that, our time is up for today. Uh, thanks a bunch, you guys, for sticking with me through this damn stalactite cave from hell where I can't get a good look at anything. And uh, hopefully we will see you guys next time.